Hello and thank you most kindly for joining us tonight on Daily Politics, your destination for everything politics. I'm Hamza Idris. Let's capture some of today's interesting political developments. Members of the House of Representatives have directed the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited to reveal the price it sells crude oil to the Dangote refinery. The members also urged the NPCL to allow independent marketers to buy petrol directly from the Dangote refinery. This comes amidst the ongoing price dispute between the NNPCL and Dangote. Earlier, the federal government has stated that it will not interfere in the ongoing dispute between NNPCL and Dangote over the pump prices. And as the federal government commences payment of the 70,000 Naira minimum wage, yearly salaries of federal workers reach 4 trillion Naira, according to available data. There are over 1.2 million civil servants on the payroll of the federal government who will be paid the newly approved minimum wage in September. However, experts fear that the rise of salary payment by the federal government to 4 trillion naira may worsen Nigeria's debt profile, which stood at $42 billion. Well, these are some of the top political stories of the day. Now let's unpack our talking points on the program. The future of ministers and other top officials of President Tinubu cabinet hangs in the balance. This comes following a recent announcement by the presidency that President Tinubu will shuffle his cabinet in the next few days. Earlier in May, President Tinubu vowed to sack any underperforming minister in his cabinet. According to the president, the expectations of Nigerians need to be met and he aims to do his best for the country. But amid this uncertainty about the future of the presidential cabinet, the big question remains, who are the right people Tinubu should have as ministers? Well, we get to find answers to this and many more questions tonight on Daily Politics. And viewers, you can also join the conversation from wherever you may be watching this episode through telephone lines a little later on the program. But joining us to dissect this issue on Daily Politics tonight is an APC chip team and a political commentator, Engineer Nuruddin Hamayaro. Thank you and welcome to the program, Engineer. Thank you for having me. We're happy having you. And we'll take a short break. When we return, the conversation commences. Don't go away. Yes, welcome back. Engineer, maybe we should start with salary because I'm sure our viewers, especially those who are always glued to their TV sets on Friday in order to call, to hear your take on the commencement of the payment of 70000 Minimum wage. Is that a cheering news? It's not. It's an insulting news to me. Because the NLC has argued extensively with reasons to back their demands. With the current situation we are in in the country, yeah. it's not about minimum wage. It, they, isn't that it, it shouldn't be an issue? It, it shouldn't be an issue. Then what should be the issue? Engineer? Because they talked about living wage, which is human. Because if, if I can't live, we are, we are born to be free. If I can't live within what God has given to me, then what is the essence of living? And government, and that is governance, what government is expected to do within the available resources in the country is to give these basics of life. So minimum wage as it stands today, which was delayed until now that they are trying to effect it, is, is not even, it's not even adequate. Because me and you, we know what, where 70,000 stands today. Mm. Because the economy has been dollarized. The price of goods in the market has been, you know, has skyrocketed. So your 70,000 practically today will not end you. We say this thing repeatedly in this platform and other platforms will not end you a bag of rice. Which is nearly neither will, 100, neither will it get you, neither will it pay school fees for your children. So it is just an amount that should even frustrate you more. But you are an APC chip team. I don't know. You, 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 you always, I, I, you know. Yes, I always we, ask this yes, question when we have I, I, I like it when we, we, first of all, always look at ourselves as Nigerians. Because there has to be Nigeria before there will be party. Okay. Yes, and this money, government should not be looking at how much they have given to Nigerians. They should be looking at the power of that amount. What will it do to the market? 
If I take this 70,000 to the market today as a Nigerian, how, where do I stand? Side by side, the, the, the products I'm, I'm going to buy, the services I'm supposed to ask for, you know, is it education, is it healthcare, is it basic food items? Where do my 70,000 stands? So what do you think the, the, the president and the federal government should do? Respect to this now, okay, the money has come. We should strengthen our currency, our currency and make it more, you know, uh, how, uh, make, strengthen the currency to the, to the stage that no matter the amount, yes. it will have value in the market. Even if you give Nigerians 200,000 today, some people earn up to 200,000 in uh, agencies, yes. you know, perhaps so even 500,000. Yeah, 500, but yes. if you ask them, they wind up in debt at the end of the month because that same money, by the time they take energy for the month, is 150. By the time they fuel their cars in the month, is another 200. Mm. By the time they eat, you know, buy food items, they will even have to borrow to complement. So the 500,000 is practically like four hundred dollars so nigerians should rather have a stable naira we should have a stable naira and a more competing naira with other currencies of the world because everything we are talking about today in this country is expo is importation mm. everything we do we have we have still we are yet to still maximize you know the abundant the, the abundant resources is it vis-a-vis -vis agricultural mechanization is it industrialization we have not done so much in terms of manufacturing and production that will guarantee the value of our naira so whatever amount you earn mm. is like you Nothing. are just you just basically struggle to survive all right engineer now the big elephant in the house did not go to npc fight is it worth it yes it's worth it the fight is worth it it's worth it okay explain because in nigeria we keep hearing NNPC has been in existence since 1967. 47. Okay, 47. Before independence. So, sorry, 77. 77. 77. 77. 77. Okay. It has been in existence, but till today, you hardly get a Nigerian that will tell you he has anywhere he can go and get a transparent data of how the NNPC is operating. These are because we, we are a mono economic uh, system. Mm. We are supposed since 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 the crude today form eighty percent of our gener internally ge generated revenue. Mm. Then they should be transparent to always furnish Nigerians with these details. How do we end this money? How much crude do we produce? Because it keeps it keeps dancing. The OPEC the OPEC data as at August this year mm. we. We generate one one point three to one point three fifty uh, uh, million barrels. That's okay, one million three hundred fifty thousand okay. uh, uh, barrels. Yeah, per day. Per day. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you take this, well, let's even forget about September that we are, or give and take, we put it at December. Rate. Yes. Now, the fight has always been. Now, Dangote is in existence. He needs adequate crude to okay. produce the Nigerian energy demand, and this is what is pressing on all our necks. Yeah. It's killing some. Some are dying, we don't even know. Now, if you take and now go test full capacity and and, and the OPEC data, yeah, now go say it's as 50 percent of what we produce per day, slightly 50, 50 percent because he is 650,000. Even if they were to give him everything, yes, if they are to give him everything, he is 50 percent, even less than maybe around 58, 57 percent. You, you, you sat in the navy, no, I may be wrong. no, no, I'm coming, I, 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 I need to make this point. This okay, okay, now if. We are at 650. Mm. And Afrex Zim Bank is saying our foreign service loan repayment is pegged at 90,000 barrels per day, which is also an issue Nigeria should be looking at. Okay. Yes, because Afrex Zim Bank said it based on their data. What we use to service those loans, foreign loans, is 90,000 barrels per day. And if you, take, if you take our budget service for the day, based on the annual budget what we need to service the budget adequately if you if you look at the 27 trillion naira budget mm. and you break it into what we need per day yes the balance of the crude adequately should serve that budget because we are talking at 560 barrel per day multiply it by 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 72 dollars per, uh, per, per, per barrel today Multiply it, it will give you an amount that likely 
is around what we need to, to service our budget per day. So however, are, are you saying that however, we are stable? However, no, I'm not saying we are stable. Okay. I'm saying there are equations that are missing, and that is where the insincerity comes from. So who is not telling the truth, and who is doing what is wrong that is destroying the continent? Now, the House now, of Representatives, do you think now, they will achieve their aim in I'm, actually asking the NNPC no, it's, it's, to it's announce not, the money, I mean the amount they are selling? Because even the government mandated that by October, mm. which is just two days, even though we have celebrated independence today in some places, you understand? But Angote is supposed to be giving 385,000 barrels per day based on government estimation, which is about 60% capacity. Now, if Angote will be giving that, look at the indices. NMDPRA, based on their news, stated that our consumption of fuel, particularly PMS, yes. is 44.3 million liters daily. And if you take this into consideration, vis-a-vis how many liters of crude of PMS you get per barrel of crude? Per barrel of crude, what you get is 159 liters of PMS. Okay. Per barrel. Okay. So now, if you take the 44.3 million liters, that is the Nigerian demand on daily basis. Yes. What we need is just around 270,000 barrel of crude that will produce it, that amount. And 270,000 of crude is about 35% of Angote's capacity. So if Angote will be demanding, if Nigeria will promise him 385,000, let's wait and see what happens. Yes, if they give him 385,000, it has even gone way above what we need on a daily basis because that demand, that supply from, from, from Nigerian yeah. government, will automatically make Angote to give us adequate 100% energy demand. We don't need it from anybody. We don't need it from anybody. Now the question is the pricing. Yes. At the moment, many people are surprised why is Angote's uh, uh, PMS, uh, is the news, the conflicting figures you get in the news. NMPC says this, Angote says that there is no clear, they said they bought it from him. 846 he said no i did not is 700 the figures are conflicting yes but we should be fair his his crude supply comes mostly now outside the country so it, and it, i saw it, 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 it i yeah. saw it from his chief the group chief um commercial officer okay the gcco yes. of Dangote, mm. who says they are supply the supply of crude they are getting from the nigerian government is now at 33 percent now, if this refinery is going to function effectively and they need between 80% to function, or let's even put it at the 100, they need to get their supply from outside. And they are already targeting Brazil and America to complement. Now, you don't expect me in business mm. to bring my crude in dollar, undergoing all the processes of buying, shipping, yeah. insurance, landing, everything. And I will come and refine and sell it to you in Naira, in Naira and, and, cheaper. Even, and, and even cheaper. It's but, not possible. But, but do you think federal government can solve this problem? That is federal, why the question I wanted to ask you. Federal government can solve the problem. But how? The federal government can solve the problem. First of all, federal government has given the mandate. That's why I say October, yes. which marks our, new, our, our bet, yes. our independence, 64th, 64th anniversary, even though the yes. 64 looks so shameful. Mm. But since it marks our independence anniversary, that means we are entering the 65th year. Mm. I hope the 65th year will be a blessing. And it looks like because the president says supply from federal government, mm. you know, from NMPC now to Dangote is 385. Yes. And that is 60% of what Dangote needs. So he has it adequate. Okay. And the 40%, if he is going to operate at full capacity, hopefully will come from outside. Now, if he gets that, everything is nice. Mm. The supply is Naira, the insurance is Naira, the refining is Naira, everything is Naira. Mm. So we hope that it will reduce the price of fuel and make it affordable. How much? We don't know. Because at the moment we are buying it above 1,000, even in Abuja. Yes. But by, by the time this starts happening, hopefully we get it, it will begin to decline. Maybe 700, maybe 650. Because initially, remember before 
the current hike mm. it was around 600 yeah, 650 seven, six yeah. and 700 mm. now that this happened and we have seen the effort of the federal government to mm. solve the problem let's see what happened when he begin to receive his crude at 60 percent capacity in naira then we begin to know whether there is a foul play or not because once he has that mm. he has no reason he has no reason to advance that uh, the, the, the prices. Is yes. High. Okay, finally, finally on this, which is really important is, as you rightly mentioned, 1.3 million barrels per day, according to OPEC, OPEC yes. data. You, you serve in the Navy. Yes, of course. Uh -huh. And most likely maybe even in the Niger Delta. Why are we not optimizing our production now briefly yeah yes it might because be if brief. You can optimize production yes. it means yes. we can now you give can... them what and then even sell and then service now you can you can obligations. you can attribute this to insecurity okay the, vandal the, the vandalization of the the, the the oil pipelines which if you remember just a week ago or two Okonje Ewala, our former finance minister, said there should be an all-out war because this, is, this seems to be the only way we can save our economy, mm. to maximize production. Yes. Because if we have it excess, there is no reason why we not give Angote what he needs to solve Nigeria's energy demand problem. Now, this, the, pro, the challenges of insecurity affect this seriously. And again, and again, I read it quite... I, I read, it, read it clearly from the energy, the, from the economic intelligence uh, unit, mm. which is a world body, mm. that questions the integrity of the NMPC in terms of crude oil production. In fact, based on their data, our crude oil production is slightly above 200,000 barrels per day. And if you look at the reality, I'm not confirming this, but mm. if you look at the reality, mm. where we are today, it just seems what they are saying is right. Because even when the Russian-Ukraine war started, mm. there, was a, there was a rise Spike, in, in, yeah. in, uh, in the crude oil price. Mm. But ask yourself, did we make money from that? Because if we were producing, as at the optimally, time, yeah. optimally, mm. we would have made a lot of money to improve on our reserve. But the, our excess crude account. But we did not make anything, simply because we were not producing much. Now, is it true that it is 200,000? Or 1.3? Or we are just lying because if, the, if, if we are producing 1.3 based on the OPEC data and is with all sincerity, I see no reason why we cannot give Angote what he needs. Mm. Yes, the PIA stated it clearly that there should be Mark, adequate supply to foreign, to local yeah, refineries, yeah, 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 which refinery. they call the direct crude supply obligation, mm. the DCSO. But they, 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 they also pegged it at a willing buyer, willing seller agreement. Now we are in need. So we should Nigerians supply. are in need. Policies are not from God. Is from us human beings. Mm. Now that we are in a dire need in the country, it stops Nigeria nothing from reviewing these same policies. Because if you look at the upstream players, people like the Conaco, the Adax, the EFL, the Ajib, and the rest, yes, they feel obligated to, to make their money. They want to take it out, make money, and come back. But again, now there's a new player. There's a new sheriff in town. Who should he, be he has served? invested $20 billion dollars. Now, what the Nigerian government should be doing to Dangote is to be fair to him and to be fair to Nigerians. And how do they do that? Briefly, yeah. We bring, have to move to our bring out topic a sharing, of the day. Bring yeah. out a sharing formula that will seek to address Dangote's investment in Nigeria side by side other investors so that even their benefits should reflect based on their investment. All so right. if Dangote has invested $20 billion and you are now giving him, you are now mandating that he should be giving 60%, mm. those that in invested... One billion dollar or less than that should know that their benefit in Nigeria will not. They will not be fighting Angote who invested twenty billion dollars. All right, thank you very much, Engineer Nuruddin Hamayero, for your detailed explanation. You are very interested in the oil and and gas sector. Of course, we will have time to discuss that more. But our main topic of today: who and who? I mean, in terms of quality and pedigree, should serve in President Tinubu's new cabinet because from all indications we are going to have some changes yeah my brother technocrats are not hidden um credible people are not hidden 
people who have the interest of the country at heart are not hidden. Okay. But because we always seek to service political allies in calculation to what is obtainable next when I come for my political campaign, mm. we, 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 we seem to have missed the essence of governance, the purpose of governance. And that is where we forget about service delivery and we only bring vested interests. And at the end, it becomes detrimental to the entire country. Right. Now, the issue, who, to, who should serve in Tinubu's government? Yes. If after getting to two years now, mm. if we still have not figured out as a country which minister is... Because for me, mm. if personally today you will give me a pen and paper and say, I don't need anybody to score any minister. I can personally score you because at my age now, with my experience... I think I can score any minister in Nigeria. Okay, we'll give you room to score um, some of the ministers as time permits. But okay. in the meantime, we'll open the line so that um, our viewers will also contribute to the main conversation. Yes, it is now time for you to call and then comment. The main topic is who, in terms of pedigree and experience and then commitment, should form the next cabinet of President Bola Call the telephone number that will be displayed on your screen but speak to the point be precise and don't use foul language we're expecting your calls yes Julian, you did you are an apc chieftain i keep reminding this because our read our, our viewers should also understand from where you are coming from of course you're also a technocrat um where did the president you know got it wrong in the present configuration i can't tell you I have seen a careful selection of who should become ministers. Okay. Yes, the president has, um, we've all had foul plays that has taken place. I, I, I'm sure you can remember the, the times of uh, the Mariam Shetty's issue, and shortly again, During there, the, there yeah, was, there the was a swap. Another lady was brought in, the same thing from Kano, because there was a, so uh, allegedly there was a foul play on who submits whose name. Now, the president, who, strategic, who is strategic in nature, mm. and as many of us regard him, was expectation was that he, most of these guys will be subjected to a thorough a screening vis-a-vis mm. -vis what services they are supposed to render to Nigerians. Because I can tell you, if there was one person I have seen his interview, and I was so much pleased with it, but was not given a chance as a result of political, you know, mm. crashes here and there, was Erufai. Because when, uh -oh. when he came on the podium, he was, you know, placed on the power issues we're having in the country. Mm. And he spoke extensively. He gave solutions to what he would do right. at the discourse. He gave, he gave some slight solutions, what he would offer at the uh, transmission and generation. But, but unfortunately, but unfortunately all right, let's take our first caller to... engineer, yes. And he's Shamaki, he's a regular caller on, on this program. Yes. Shamaki, welcome to the program. We're happy having you. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very good. good evening. Good evening, Shamaki, yes. Good evening. Good evening, Shamaki. Thank you very much. Sir, yes. uh, to, to, to reshuffle his ministry. Mm. Uh, reshuffle or no reshuffle is not the answer. Okay. He should go back to his campaign promises. I think I said it earlier in the morning. He should go back to his campaign promises. Because there was no how to meet. That was not how he made this country. I mean, he left this country. So, bringing new minister will not solve the problem unless he divides the forces of sleep. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. No matter the kind of okay. people he will bring, Shamaki, is that what you are saying? Uh, it's not about changing the ministers, uh, but revisiting uh, campaign uh, promises uh, and uh, then prioritizing, uh, right? So, what is the we haven't seen anything yet. People are suffering. The government of the people for the people. How could people have been called that policy? He should have had the policy on the police. That is what people have been. And you're pretending to me. You don't understand what you mean. 
So what I'm not saying she referred me the paper. That's the only thing. All right, thank you, Shamaki. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, Engineer Rudy, you had Shamaki. Yes, I had him. Okay. But I want my brother Shamaki to understand. No matter how he goes back to his campaign promises, mm. the execution stage of it has to come side by side those personalities. I want to give you a quick reminder. Mm. Obasanjo, when he came 1999, mm. he saw how bad we were at the international community with respect to financial transactions. Mm irregularities of uh, borrowings uh, and all that you know and a lot of uh, illegal practices what he did to reposition nigeria he said okay look efcc should come in and weigh on on the financial mal malpractices issue less than a year we saw what nuri badu did mm. during the same time he had we we knew how how bad it was with nigeria in terms of illicit drug importation expired food items importation what he did very fantastic. He established NAVDAC, put Dora Akunyeli, just, the way he her, FCC. just like the way he did FCC, and marvelously, we also what Dora Akunyeli did. At the same time, another example I will give you still with, with the same Obasanjo. I may not, I don't, I don't like him because he had the best opportunity to have fixed this country, but with the little he has done, yes, but he messed it up at large. Mm. Now, these two instances I have given I, I, you... I think even the messing up is alleged. Yes, allegation. No, it's not an allegation. It's, it's real. I, we can at the same go to facts, but now on the matter. Yes. You know, the two people Obasanjo brought, just these two examples, you knew he wanted to reposition this sector of the economy. And he did well. And look at the people, again, on the other side, when he used a Rufai in FCT. Till today, 20 years later. People are still talking about Erufai with side by side. You know, you can't even compare him with any minister. All right, so Ingenia, let, let me correct your indulgence. Matters. Yes. Thank you. Okay, personality. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. we lost the caller, Jacob from George. Jacob, try and call again. We are here for you. Yes. So, but, okay, we have another caller. Hello? Hello, good, good evening. Yes, good evening and welcome to the program. Who are we on to? Yes. Overruch, I'm calling you from Akwanga. From Akwanga. Okay, you're welcome to the program. Yes, Akwanga, not State. Yes, I know. Welcome. What is your yes. contribution to the program? Yes. Yes, my contribution is simple. Okay. You know, our president told us that we should not pity him. Yes, he says he so. Know, he know what is the problem of Nigeria. Yeah. So we should not pity him, he can solve our problem. Suddenly we brought him in. And the people that he give them opportunity to serve with him, or in our president know them before he give them that opportunity to serve with him. Yes. So if we see that their, their performance is poor, you know what to do because I will tell you this today. If our president did not perform after two years, in the next three uh, in the uh, next uh, three years, in the uh, if our president did not perform, let him know that Nigeria will not go and vote in the party again. Oh, because people are dying everywhere. All right. Everywhere I told you, hunger is too much for this country. Okay. For Thank you. For you, our only wicked is only wicked is working for this in cabinet. All right. Thank you Even very much. The today, I will change the cabinet. All, all of them. I will change them. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's threatening that he will not even vote because of the level of uh, frustration. Yes, because what is the essence of his vote? Your vote is supposed to serve you. Your vote is supposed to count. Your vote is supposed to reflect in the, in the you know, uh, emergence of, of, of good leaders. But you should also ask yourself, have I voted well? You understand? Because there's, it, takes, it takes two to tango. Mm. You know, so there are a lot of things. That's why in Nigeria, discussing an, uh, any matter or mm. any aspect in isolation, you, are, you practically do injustice to that. That's, uh, that's, that's, so that's that why you, you, you so, try to... So, so you uh, have to touch so many areas because that is justice. And that is why I'm telling you, if the collective responsibility or collective result of what ministers would do to Nigerians is what would define the, the president at the end of his four years. 
So if individually they are not doing well, one of his duty is to identify and change them as at the time when due. For example, I always say this, and I will never shift my position. Mm. One year, one year is enough to indicate that you are either going towards success or you are tilting towards failure. As a president? Yes, one, one, year. one year. Because from the selection of personalities, we just talked about what Erufai, Nuri, Badu, Okonjo, Iwela, uh, people like Chikwe, Meka, Chikelu, you know, all these people, we saw what they did during the Obasanjo time. Mm. Now, tell me, pick any one of these people, place it on what, what do we have in this government. For me, he, yes, he chose, some people call uh, the, uh, um, yes, Owike mm. in Abuja, some people call him Penta, some people call him, uh, Maybe he's supposed he, to have he, done more no, than. I mean, I mean, he just identifies a ninety percent project, finish them, and take the glory now. But is I, that not bad? No, is that, I, I mean, is that not good? I keep telling people: Is it that other ministers have not seen ninety percent project they can complete to take the glory, or they cannot? They have also not seen anything to paint. So, if this guy declares Wiki as his best minister, it's because yes, he has seen a lot. He has seen something concrete. Yes. All right. We have a caller in the person of Mohammed from Abuja. Welcome to the program, Mohammed. Hello. Hello, we are with you. Welcome to the program. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, Mohammed. Welcome. Yeah, firstly, it's a good idea for okay. the president to shuffle his cabinet. Okay. That is one. But the, the problem that with the people who start to bring in there, what they have to offer the Nigeria? That's the first question we need to ask ourselves. And I'm trying to call your attention to your guest here. Yes. You're trying to offer the door. What is wrong with you? We have a problem in this country. I don't know. People want to say something and say, Oh, my God, oh, my God. About those part of people that put up in the job problem today. Okay. I don't know. Nobody will give you an answer. Yes. Okay. I'm in Nigeria. Of the Fig Nation, that is put there, that about those talking about the farm of Nigeria. Or about the farm. What have you done to Nigeria? Nigeria Nigeria is a country. We are one of the best countries in the world that will receive money. Or no, yes, you know about the period. What happened to our father right now? The US are talking about, I have a backup with US. So I want to show you 41 million. It's my proof. But what the father said, they know him. I wrote the position there. They collected money from the guy. Not the old money. We just got the two that they should gather the kids. What are, what are they doing now? Hmm. They are just, you know, what you just have to know that the people, how to check our strength in this country, we are how the progress. Okay, okay. Mohammed, I have, I have a question for you, Mohammed. What was the question? What is yes. the question? Now, if, if you are to advise the president, who and who do you think, not in terms of mentioning name, we're talking about pedigree that he should bring on board that will help him to actually take out Nigeria from its current trouble? Sir, hello? Yes, I'm with you. You as a person, you, you can serve Nigeria, but they will never give they will never give that opportunity. I can do the same thing. The judging man is saying you can't say to the the president of our city. When people get into that post, they change. It's only people that have fear of God. Mm. That fear of God is no more in the mosque. That fear of God is no more in the churches. That fear of God is no more anywhere. Service place everywhere. Mm. So what we have to do now, we have to search ourselves first. Are we ready for the progress in this country? Mm. We all are we ready? We are talking about youth. Youth of nowadays, they are looking for they must stay in the field doing that. They must stay in the field doing that, and they don't have a work doing. So one is sitting with a phone of four hundred thousand. He doesn't have a work doing. What do you expect him to be able to put him as a minister? All right, Mohammed. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Yes, he said any other person can do it. It's about yeah. Uh, you it's know, about the fear you know, of God. Yes, about the fear uh, of but God. But there are some countries that don't even believe in God. Yes, but, yeah. yes, they don't believe in God. But what I want you to understand, now, why I choose, I just mentioned to you the good things Obasanjo did. Yes, and he actually said, but, why are you but, mentioning but, Obasanjo? But at the same time, mm. I'm telling you, he missed the point. At, the, towards the end of his tenure. The, yes, allegedly. and that has defined the current democratic settings we're having in Nigeria. Oh, because oh. if only he had gotten it right. Mm. Mm? The trajectory. The trajectory. People would just come and build either on build that. on what he, but never to take us back. For example, the power sector during Obasanjo's time, 
it was one of the biggest fraud, $16 billion. The time of Liel Imoke and other people like Joseph Makoju, who was in Angote, and I think of recent years late. You know, assuming we got it right with power, me and you know how many would have had on power now in Nigeria from 1999. Because power defines everything. But we have spent more than that amount well, now in we between have, the period, in, when you look at what it. What I'm saying is, yes. during Obasanjo's eight years, this was money spent on power. So who it, should, who and, should, and who should, who should, who should, is it an engineer? Somebody who has worked maybe in... Uh, leadership, leadership has very little to do with profession. Okay. Knowledge for knowledge in leadership is not 100%. One of the best leaders we have today in the world is not because they are very professional in their field, No. Like he said, is because they have skills to manage people and resources towards a, towards a desired result. That's leadership. So, and this is what the president is expected to do. He, needs, he does not need 50% knowledge in power to, be, to, be, to, to make him best president. He does not need 50% knowledge in agriculture to make him a good president. But he needs basic in agriculture, in health, in power, and he needs good advisors that will provide him with such information as at the time he needs them because it enables him to take a decision. And that's where the sincerity comes from. Because oh. if he gets adequate information that are genuine, that will touch the life of Nigerians and Nigeria, it means he will take decisions okay. that matters. But when you bring, for example, I call when Buhari was bringing people like Saleh Maman as oh, minister. Sorry, I, I don't want you to be calling them. No, I know you can see you are very angry. Okay, we have let, to. let's take this caller from um, Kaduna, Ilyasu, and then I will allow you to uh, uh, vent your anger. Yes. Ilyasu, welcome to the program. Well, you are welcome. Good evening. Yes, good evening. We, we want to hear your Hi. thoughts on um, how we can get the cabinet of President Tinubu work. For Nigerians, now, it's very you know we 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 are looking at it as if uh, as if uh, it's hard. It's not. It's there's nothing hard there. It's as just no that we said, yeah, yes. with the uh, engineer there. Yes, that he needs a good advisor in terms of agriculture and otherwise. <laughs> it's very easy. We have people that can do. It. You don't need people that are hundred percent. They are good. You know, there are people that God has given them this knowledge. Are giving them this power to do it. They are there. And they are not picked. We know most of them. Okay. But when you give them this chance, they are, they are ready to do it. Engineer there, from what he was talking about, from, what he was, uh, from his own uh, analysis, mm. I think he can do something good. <laughs> wow. Nobody, Somebody's campaign nobody, for you. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody that cannot do anything, even mm. me myself, if you give me Minister of Defense, I will handle it very well, even more than the man is there. Okay. Nigeria, like, yeah, we have a problem with insecurity, which mm. everybody knows. So what are we talking about? Okay. So, about? so what is the way forward, Elias? What is the way forward? The way forward is, is to get the right people there and to do the right thing, and that's all. And that's all. All right. Thank you for calling. The right people. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we going to heaven to 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 bring? No. No, and that is why I told you I don't have, I have never met Erufai in my life. I've never. But you even, mentioned his that, name. I mentioned his name. Why? Because yes, some people will have a reservation about him, but I'm just. This is just as a person, because he has his. If you look at his uh, uh, records, as FCT minister, as DGBPE, as Kaduna State Governor. Yes, when you went going to go into details. There are people who have reservations about it. We, we actually now, restricted but, but, ourselves from yes, uh, mentioning names. From mentioning, but sometimes we have to because... Across our because yes. No, sometimes you have to because it's not rocket science. We should not be dodging this. Mm. But in essence, what I'm trying to tell you is this. In Nigeria, where we are today, two sectors very important would have changed everything. Okay. Power and security. Because, these two yes, sectors. these two sectors. Because because it's actually one of the questions I wanted to raise. Because, yeah. because power and security helps agriculture. Power and security helps health. Power and security helps agriculture, Se uh, health, education. All these other sectors mm. are, um, you know, are, um, what do you, how, how do I put it? Are being regulated. There is a subsection of they are, sort. Yes, they are being uh, pushed by these two other sectors that I've mentioned, you know, to, to, to give results. The drivers, the driving sectors in Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned, is power and security. But today, what are we facing? Minister of Power in Nigeria, less than two years, has risen price 
for energy without any change in our economy from 65 to 200 and something beginning to tag them as ban a ban b nothing has changed and what where are we going to people so it's, it's not working that not, formula is not working it's not working you cannot take what we what you cannot take from somebody that has nothing mm. and you don't want people to bypass you gave you the the, the, the president came and amended if you remember mm. the electricity bill that now allow even individuals to generate electricity, not only state governments. Yes. Now, how has the government fed up with this policy? How many people today have received incentives from the federal government to help in the production of electricity via renewable energy to complement with what the federal government, with what Nigeria is producing? We right. know already the epileptic you know, nature of our generating industry the transmission and the distribution this is a topic you can discuss the whole year all right but, thank you but if only mm. if only government has concentrated on power and and security and, and in power on power to be specific my brother it will drive this economy right. successfully and you begin to see Changes. Positive changes in all, all other right. sectors. We, yes, we'll security take, we'll take this caller from I think Benin City in the person of engineer Olua. Welcome to the program, engineer. Ogun, okay. Welcome, engineer. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. You are welcome to the program. Yeah, how is everything, sir? Thank Fine. you very much. Fine, okay. Let's have your thoughts, yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate our brother with you there. Okay. No. Uh, and I thank you, the young of the program. Okay. You see, my observation is this. The struggle of the cabinet is not the problem of this country. I'm missing this issue. The system of the government is not the problem of this country. The problem of this country now is to uphold, uphold the rule of laws. Our law is false. Our law is bad. Assuming our president has to down to rearrange the law. The law we are using in this country is very bad. Hmm. Assuming if the Mr. President can even sit down and then uh, at least to uphold that to restore most of the the law that we are seeing in this country, you see, the changing of the measures of environment, uh, changing the measures of petrol, or uh, this and that. My contribution to this line is going to be very, very short. What we are facing is, is, is okay, why the Boko Haram, why the security, why all this? Those people that they are far extent. Where are, where, are, where are they? And uh, we are talking about the petroleum, the petroleum is very scarce, the, uh, the, the petrol, the, this and that is very scarce in this country. But, sir, I'm not in this issue. Let the pre Mr. President sit down at home to rearrange to uphold to rearrange the, the rule of law in this country. The rule of law is a rearrange. Everybody will sit tight. All right. Investment will go. Corruption will go. Everything will go. Then the Nigerian will be okay. The Mr. President is working fine. Even if he brought a Jacob Black to come and join him to this cabinet without the approval of the rule of law. My brother, we are just Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Olua. He yeah. said it's not even about changing. I concur says, with him 100%. Now, you, I sir. want my friend, my mm. brother, Engineer Shul, on, to understand something. Yes. And I mentioned it once here in this platform. Latik Fagbemi, mm. son, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation. Yes. I want Nigerians to follow up with what Latik Fagbemi is doing. For me, my best minister in Nigeria. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, what did you do? Yes. Because it's very like, good. A, but very engineer good. always very, talking very, about no, respectful. No, no, yes. No. That's what, no. It's not being... I want you to understand okay. where he met Nigeria and what currently he is doing. Okay. Latik Fabemi came up with five policies that, if only the president will weigh on this f five is strategy. Maybe you mentioned one it or two. It will solve. Okay. I will mention the whole five for you. Okay. Because, the, but, the first because of one. Time, yes. The first one is. He mentioned about fighting the corruption. Mm. But the second one, he mentioned public engagement. Me and you know how vital it is mm. for us to be engaging public, to enlighten people on what is the, their power as people and the power, they are, you know, the benefit they are supposed to feel from government and the essence of working together. Public engagement. And this is where us politicians, we come in. And then he talks about enforcement and sanction as this is what engineer is talking about yeah this enforcement and sanctions is we have seen so many people today who have destroyed this country that are running 
the street of Abuja and other cities with escort simply because they went on a plea bargain and returned 5% of what they have stolen. So if only the president will enforce sanctions, what I expected when there was an allegation of the Angote refinery or his product coming out with high sulfur, and because this was a national disgrace, yes. and there was and a committee from the National Assembly who went in an investigation, and these products were subjected to different labs, yes. you know, and the outcome was contradictory to the allegation by the NMDPRA. What I expected to see was sanctioned from the president. All right. Head uh, of those agencies should be punished adequately so that the next coming person will, will not take Nigerians for granted. All right, we'll take our last caller, then I will give you room to actually mention the remaining of the points you, you have. Yes, Shuaibu from Niger. Welcome to the program, Shuaibu. Hello. Hello, good evening. Yes, Shaibu. Welcome to the program. And quickly, let's have your point. I'm calling from Niger. Yes, you are welcome. I mentioned that. Yes. So what is your take in less than one minute? Uh, in less than one minute, you can add to another one minute for me. No, please. We don't have time. Okay. Kubu, you can add to one minute for me. The, the government of President Boratinubu is okay. Okay. The problem we're having now... How can we fix Cardinal Refinery? How okay. can we fix Wari Refinery? How can we finish Potaco, two Potaco Refinery? So, uh, as far as you are concerned, it's not about changing the cabinet members, but... Um, no, they, we are talking about changing of the cabinet member. The minister, uh, Lord, can you listen to me? The minister, the people we appointed, all the ministers, apart from Wiki, they are all arm robber. I'm Allegedly, please, please, uh, don't use foul language, yes, Shaibu. Uh, because there's no minister in Nigeria that can perform anything. They're only serving their people. But Making are you not money. contradicting you yourself? Money to pay for the next election. Are, are you not contradicting yourself? You said Tinibu's cabinet has no problem. Because here you are. the minister, all the ministers in Nigeria, now they're after money. They're after money. When you talk, they say... May, may okay. Listen to me. Okay, in one word. No, no, no. We don't have time. We don't have time. Yes, I just want to hear from you. Let me finish. You. Okay. Should we, we change the? Can, okay. Can. Thank you. Thank you, Shaibu. Should we change the cabinet, or you should go on with them? In one word. Oh, we lost uh, Shaibu. Of course, we are also rounding up. We have less than two minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you: Should the president res reduce the number of the ministers? Or still over forty? First of all, reduce the number. Okay. We, didn't, we don't need anything like Minister of Livestock. It's a department under Minister of Agriculture. And with the current situation Nigeria is facing, there should not be any introduction of ministry. Like the introduction but some, of the... Some will come after I'm you. I'm just telling you, people you should be, it's not a problem. Livestock, but it has been there for a it very has long been time. There, but they as a department, they should, I will not address but, the issue of but the they, But they can make it to work. Making it a ministry will not make it to work. If you think making it ministry is what will make it to work, then use that power and make the department to work. And then on the other hand, introduction of this student loan is not necessary because it's a department under a uh, TED phone. You can make it function like that. Okay. So in essence, if the Stephen Orosanye report yes. that advises... Which should, should be your final word, know, yes. He advise on the merger yes. of ministries, agencies departments, and, and agencies... Department. First of all, to reduce the cost of governance. Okay. And then secondly, the president should be very wary of his officers that are not doing well. He should let them go. He, all by, right. By, 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 Thank by, you. By 90% of his ministers should go. Honestly, should go. Thank you very much. Let this be your final soundbite. Engineer Nuruddin Hamayaro, chief ten of the All Progressive Congress, a former naval officer. And of course public commentator for coming to the program and for your informed perspective. We thank, want to have you some other time. Thank you for having me. And we was Dr. Sarap on today's package. We hope you found the conversation engaging and informative and be sure to join Daily Politics airing every week in our special package on Friday during which we open the telephone line for you to comment on national issues as we did today. Join us next week for more interesting packages. Bye-bye for now. I'm Hamza Idris.